Problem Solving Biology 9700, Paper 2, Variant 2, February, March 2017. Question 1. A diagram of chromosome from a dividing cell is shown in Figure 1.1. A dividing cell is at risk of losing genetic material each time DNA replication occurs. On figure 1.1, label a line and the letter G to show the location on the chromosome of an area that helps to prevent the loss of genes. So that area is a telomere and it will be located either, either here or at the end. Make sure that you write the letter G and not the word telomere or you're going to lose the mark. Chromosome shown in figure 1.1 consists of one long DNA molecule associated with histone proteins. Name one stage of mitosis in which a chromosome would have the same gen general structure as the chromosome shown in 1.1. So that stage would be either anaphase or it could be telophase as well. Why? Because in these phases, the chromosome, uh, the two daughter uh, chromosomes are divided. Two daughter chromatids, not chromosomes. Chromosomes is the name for two chromatids that are joined together. But in these phases, uh, these chromatids are separated. That's why the answer is anaphase and telophase. Now, name the stage in the mitosis, mitotic cell cycle during which the cytoplasm and the cell divide to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. Now, whenever you see the word uh, dividing of cytoplasm, just know that they're talking about cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is the physical process of cell division, which divides the cytoplasm of a parental cell into two daughter cells. So the answer to this would be cytokinesis. The control of cell cycle can be affected by extracellular chemical messengers that bind to proteins and glycoproteins. In the cell surface membrane, uh, okay, so the overall mechanism is known as cell signaling. State the term used to describe the proteins and glycoproteins that function is this way, in this way. So those proteins and glycoproteins are receptors. The infectious disease cholera is caused by a bacterium. Figure 2.1 shows a transmission electron micrograph of this bacterium. Name the bacterium that causes cholera. That would be Vibrio cholerae. Make sure you memorize this. The bacterium in figure 4.1 is an example of a prokaryotic cell. Each of the descriptions A to C describes a cell structure found in prokaryotic cells and plant cells. Make sure that you read this carefully. For each of the descriptions A to C, name the cell structure described and state one difference in the structure between a prokaryotic cell and a plant cell. The site of polypeptide synthesis, the structure would be ribosome. Because it does all the protein synthesis. And the difference would be, you can write that in prokaryotic cell, prokaryotic, there are 70S ribosome, while in plant cell, there are 80S ribosome. The genetic material of the cell. Now, for this, you shouldn't confuse it with a nucleus. Because whenever you hear about genetic material, you might think of nucleus, but it is not the case here. Let me use a different color. This is very wrong here. So because in the question, it was, it was very clearly stated that you have to consider the structures that are found in both prokaryotic cells and plant cells as well. And nucleus is not found in prokaryotic cells. So you can only, and only consider DNA, which is found in both prokaryotic and plant cells. And the difference in DNA found in prokaryotic and plant cells would be that in prokaryotic cells, in prokaryotes, prokaryotic cells, the DNA is in the form of a strand and it is circular. But in plant cell, it's linear, or you can say there are no histone proteins in um, the DNA of prokaryotic cell, while there are histone proteins in the DNA of a plant cell. But I am writing here that in in prokaryotic cell, DNA is not DNA is not surrounded by a nuclear envelope. While in plant cell, it is.
Okay. The structure that provides a rigid shape to the cell and prevents osmotic lysis. So that structure would definitely be cell wall. Cell wall. Difference would be in prokaryotic cell wall. Okay. Made up of peptidoglycan. Why are you not considering for fungi or any other, or maybe virus? Because here it was mentioned that cholera is a bacterium and they are talking about cholera, which is a prokaryotic cell here, and that's why you're only restricted towards bacterial cells. Peptidoglycan and plant cells, you know that it is made up of cellulose. Moving on. Cholera is an example of an infectious disease. Explain what is meant by an infectious disease. So just write three pointers for this. First is that a uh, infectious disease caused by a pathogen. So caused by a pathogen. Second would be it's transmissible. transmissible. So transmissible. Or, and lastly, you can write that it affects Maybe you can write, it reduces the effectiveness of functions in the body. The symptoms of cholera are caused by cholerogen, a toxin released by the bacteria. Cholerogen is a protein made up of six polypeptides, a single copy of polypeptide known as the A subunit that includes an extended alpha helix, five polypeptides that together make the B subunit. The B subunit of cholerogen binds to a cell surface membrane component known as GM1 of an intestinal epithelial cell. The complete cholerogen protein then enters the cell by endocytosis. Once uh, inside the cell, the A subunit of protein acts as an enzyme disrupting the normal functioning of the cell. List the levels of protein structure present in cholerogen. So you can see there should be a primary level, primary, since primary uh, structure of protein is the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide, then we have secondary, secondary, uh, which is the alpha helix here and tertiary as well, since there will be some interactions. And lastly, since there are more than one, uh, there is more than one polypeptide chain, so it would be quaternary as well. Quaternary. Outline the mechanism by which cholerogen enters the cell. You may use this space for annotated diagram. Let's first write the description, and then we can check the diagrams as well. So cholerogen, firstly, Cholerogen uh, fits into the receptors that are present on the cell surface membrane, and it was mentioned here as well. It binds to the cell surface membrane, so it must be receptors which uh, which is which it is binding to. Then what will happen? Uh, the membrane membrane pinches. in then membrane fusion takes place and a endocytotic vesicle or endocytotic vacuole is formed and obviously for this process ATP is required or energy Wait. Required. Right. For diagram, for example, this is a cell membrane. It has glycoprotein. All right. You can say receptors to which, for example, this is the bacterial cells. These are going to attach to this receptor, and then. The membrane sort of pinches. This process is known as invagination. The bacteria cells are here, here, 
right? And then finally, it is going to form a vesicle like this, in which there are bacteria. So this is a vesicle. Moving on. Using genetic engineering, it is possible to produce a form of collagen consisting of only subunit B. This can be combined with inactivated bacterial cells to produce vac a vaccine against cholera. So that's why subunit B rather than subunit A is used in the vaccine. So subunit B is the... We read in the question that subunit B is the one that binds to the cell surface membrane, right? Here it is written. Subunit B binds to cell surface membrane component. So we can write that subunit B is the one, uh, is, the propo is the portion that binds to the cell, right? So if we can destroy it, then there would be no binding and there, there would be no entry. So subunit B is the portion that binds to cell. And when vaccine will be injected, in antibodies will be produced, uh, which will prevent the binding to cell. Binding to cell. You can also write if subunit A is uh, less safe for the cell because here it is written it disrupts the normal functioning of cell so you can write subunit a is less safe to be used in vaccine because it damages cells. Outline how this vaccine can give protection against cholera. So get, notice the marks here. So make sure to write five different points for this in order to get full marks. Now, a vaccine contains bacterial antigens. So this vaccine bacterial antigens. I can also say subunit B antigens. And when it will be injected, a primary immune response occurs. Primary immune response to antigen occurs on the first occasion it is encountered. Now you can write about humoral response where B lymphocytes go under gonadal selection and colonal expansion and why do they do that to produce plasma cells And these plasma cells are the ones that produce antibodies. And the fact that this whole process is known as, wait, this process is known as humoral response. Humoral immune response. Why? Because the antibodies that are produced, they are uh, released into the bloodstream. And that's why the word humoral, which means fluid. You do not need to write this thing that it is a humor, humoral re immune response. You just need to write primary res immune response occur, and then you write all these steps. And then you can also write about T helper cells, T helper lymphocytes. T helper lymphocytes produce cytokines. Now this cytokine can increase the cytokine has a number of functions. It cytokine increases. It can increase humoral response 
or maybe it can stimulate T killer cells or it can also stimulate macrophages now uh, these uh, B lymphocytes when they colonal select and colonal expand they also produce memory cells memory cells produced and when the bacteria attacks again secondary immune response occurs and when secondary immune response occurs there would be higher levels of antibodies produced and this is how active immunity active immunity against cholera is gained catalase an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide a toxic waste product of metabolism figure 3.1 shows the result of an investigation into the effect of hydrogen peroxide concentration on the rate of catalyzed controlled reaction with and without presence of two different inhibitors so this is the graph given the inhibitors used in the investigation have different modes of action. Identify which of curves are the results for reaction with a non-competitive inhibitor, reaction with competitive inhibitor, and reaction without an inhibitor. So non-competitive inhibitor, you need to see non for non-competitive inhibitor, the Vmax will always decrease or change. So this is non-competitive inhibitors graph. So Z. And then we have a competitive inhibitor. For competitive inhibitor, the rate of reaction decreases. So this is the graph that is showing decreased rate of reaction. So for competitive inhibitor, Y is the graph. And without an any inhibitor, it's X. With reference to figure 3.1, compare the maximum rate of reaction, Vmax, and the Km constant for curves X, Y, and Z. So Vmax for X and Y, here you can see Vmax is the same for X and Y, which is of 10 arbitrary units. So let's write that. Vmax for X and Y, same of 10 arbitrary units. And here you can see Vmax of Z is lower than the Vmax of X and Y. And it is of how much? Let's see. It is five I think we can check one two three four five five so this is wrong it is going to be here right so that's right Vmax for Vmax of uh, Z just write Vmax of X and Y is higher than Z, which has of five arbitrary units. Now KM, let's compare the KM. So what is KM? KM is actually half of Vmax. So here the Vmax of X and Y is 10, so half would be five arbitrary units. So let's read the value of KM at five. Here you are going to draw the line. Make sure to draw it with scale, not like me. This is the KM value for X, which is coming out to be 4. Don't, don't forget to write the units. So, and you can notice one thing as well, that the KM of Z is the same as KM of X, which is 4. They're both 4. So, KM of X and Z is same, which is, which is for write the units small d and q and what about the km of y it is higher you're taking it further and drawing the line 
and it is coming out to be 6.5 so km of y is higher than km of x and z which is 6.5 mol g and q hydrogen peroxide has harmful effects on cells one effect is damage uh, it's to uh, damage DNA. Describe the structure of DNA. So you need to write about double helix, hydrogen bonding, bonding between base pairs. Actually, let's write, wait. Let's write it as the strands are held together by so strands are held together by uh, hydrogen bond between bases. Okay, now third point would be complementary base pairing is the like uh, adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. So this is complementary base pairing for the fourth point you can write the strands are anti-parallel to each other so strands are anti-parallel and you can write each uh, strand has a sugar phosphate backbone with phosphodiester bonds Then, you know that uh, the monomers, that a DNA, which is a polynucleotide, it is a polymer, right? So it, ha it will be having monomers. So the monomers are, monomers are DNA nucleotides. And lastly, you can write the structure of new nucleotide. Nucleotide consists of, you can write about the phosphate group, you can write of the deoxyribose, sugar, and nitrogenous organic base. Here you're writing deoxyribose sugar, make sure you do not write pentose sugar. Even if you're writing pentose sugar, then you need to specify which pentose sugar, because pentose sugar is also ribose sugar. But in DNA, only deoxyribose sugar is found. The cell has mechanisms to repair damage to DNA caused by hydrogen peroxide. Errors in repair may cause a change to the structure of DNA. Studies have investigated possible risks associated with foods and drink that contain hydrogen peroxide. This is because the compound can be considered a mutagen. Mutagens cause mut mutations. Explain why hydrogen peroxide can be considered a mutagen. So hydrogen peroxide, this is the formula of hydrogen peroxide, damage, just damages DNA and uh, repair errors. Errors may occur. So, due to which uh, it will lead to a incorrect nucleotide being is, uh, inserted during replication. So, uh, incorrect 
nuclear died may be inserted during replication uh, then you can also write that due to this uh, different insertion a new allele may be formed why are we writing the name allele because allele means a variant form of a gene right so when a different nucleotide would be inserted the gene would change right so then you can write that an altered wait a second altered polypeptide may form moving on The transport systems of plant and animals both function to transport substances to and from cells. Table 4.1 contains description concerning the mammalian circulatory system and the structure of the heart. Complete 4.1. Complete the table by writing down term that matches each description. Okay. So first description is a transport system where blood is enclosed in blood vessels and passes through the heart twice in one complete circuit of the body. This is definitely closed double circulation. Blood vessels with a lumen of approximately 7 micrometer in diameter that supply substances to the cells. So diameter of a capillary is 7 micrometer and it also supplies substance to cells, so capillaries. The blood vessel that carries ox oxygenated blood from lungs to the heart, this is definitely a pulmonary vein. The chamber of the heart that receives the oxygenated blood from the body, so it's uh, right atrium the structure dividing the heart into left and right sides is a septum what is the main component of the fluids associated with transport in matter uh, in mammals and plants one property of water is ability to act as a solvent so just why this property is important in mammalian transport system so to be transported many substance many substances need to be dissolved now what substances can be dissolved due to water having this ability of acting as a solvent it can be ionic compounds or polar compounds or globular proteins polar compounds can be glucose or amino acids global proteins can be uh, antibodies hormones the transport of water in plants depends on the ability of water molecules to form hydrogen bonds explain how hydrogen bonding is involved uh, with the movement of water in xylem so we know that there is hydrogen bonding between the water molecules themselves so uh, water molecules attract water molecules are attracted to each other and this property helps in adhesion and so cohesion what happens in cohesion is that um, water molecules hydrogen bond to each other and so you can write about that first water molecules and you can also write that water leaves xylem at top pulling water molecules below For adhesion, 
you can write uh, addition with addition to cellulose lining of xylem and this maintains a a column of water smooth muscle and cartilage are two of the tissues found in the walls of structure of gas exchange system of mammals complete figure 5.1 to show the distribution of these tissues in the gas exchange system of mammals choose from the four structures below so let's see these are the structures given and you have to choose from these whichever fits the best so let's first see this one uh, smooth muscles these they're absent so it could only be alveolus Because alveolus is the only one where smooth muscles are not present. Then, the smooth muscles are present, cartilage absent. So that would definitely be bronchial, because in bronchial car cartilage is not there. Then cartilage is present, incomplete rings only. So this shows that it is trachea. The word plate just is not written. If plate was written, then it would have been bronchus. Here it is written irregular plates and incomplete rings of cartilage. So this is bronchus. Very do be very uh, attentive to the words. This word is very important here. This plates. Uh, I'm going to skip this disease caused by smoking part because it has been removed from the AS level biology syllabus. So let's hop on to question six. A student investigated the effect of changing the surface area of two volume ratio on diffusion. Two different sized blocks of agar X and Y were made. The, the agar contained universal indicator solution. Universal indicator solution changes color when acid is added. The blocks were placed in dilute hydrochloric acid at the same temperature. The student timed how long it took for each block to change color completely. Blocks X and Y, blocks X and Y are shown in figure 6.1. All dimensions are in centimeters. Mm, the surface area to volume ratio of block X is 5 is to 1. Calculate the surface area to volume ratio of block Y. Show your working. Okay, so block Y. Let's find out the surface area of block Y. Surface area. You can find out the area of all the faces and add, add them. So this phase here, this whole phase here would be 6 into 3 and there are total 4 of these phases. So into 4 plus this phase above here is 3 into 3, 3 into 3 and there are 2 phases like this. So 2. Calculating this you'll get 90. Well, let's find out the volume. Volume would simply be the formula length into breadth into height. And you can put length as 6, height, and breadth. Uh, and calculating this would give you 54. Now the ratio is coming out to be 90 is to 54. But we need to simplify it. So you can just write, you can divide 90 by 54 and it would get give 1.67 so you can just give the final answer as 1.67 is to 1 this here is the final answer a student observed that block x changed color completely in much in a much shorter time than block y explained why simply block x has a smaller Sorry, not smaller, actually greater or higher, as a higher surface area to volume ratio. And the distance, the diffusion distance to the center is smaller. Or you can say shorter. That sounds more accurate. So just how the results of in investigation have helped to explain why plants need a transport system. So obviously they cannot, 
solely depend upon diffusion because diffusion diffusion rate is too slow or you can say that distances are too far to reach reach all cells and tissues and it is going to take a very long time An experiment was carried out by the student to investigate the ability of reducing sugars to diffuse through whisking tube. Figure 6.1 shows the apparatus used. At the start of the experiment, the external solution did not contain any reducing sugars. At it was the student tested for the presence of reducing sugar both within the whisking tube and the and in the external solution. Name the reagent that is used for test for the used to test for the presence of reducing sugar. We all know that it is Benedict's solution. That's it for this paper. I'll see you, I'll see you in the next video.